welcome to this special edition of Tech 24 from the 2018 Paris Motto Show. The trade show is celebrating its 120th anniversary, yet its success is on the line as several car makers, such as Ford and Volkswagen, have decided to sit it out, favoring other big tech events. The trade show has decided this year to focus on innovation, showcasing a wide array of startups that are designing the car of the future. trade shows, car lovers are usually eager to discover automakers' concept cars. These futuristic vehicles crammed with new high-tech devices aren't meant to hit production lines, but rather to make visitors dream. So here are some of our four favorite concept car reveals. Paying tribute to its best known and best looking model. French car maker Peugeot is using the Paris Motto Show to unveil its e-legend concept car, models after the 504 Coupe from the 1970s. The seats are trimmed in vivid peacock blue fabric, the steering wheel retracts when the car is in autonomous mode, and a 49-inch screen can be used for entertainment, a seemingly retro concept that is nonetheless very futuristic. It reaches a level four on the five-step scale of autonomous driving. That means you can even sleep and the car will drive on its own. And using voice command, you can also switch back to driving if you want and the wheel will unfold again. Another highlight of the 2018 Paris Motto Show is Audi's electric supercar and race car, the PB18 e-tron. Once seated, the dash cluster, steering wheel, and pedals automatically move towards the center. As for French car maker DS, its vision of what a car will look like in 2035 combines technology and poetry. The XE Tense concept car by DS is fully electric and it offers a dual experience because it's asymmetrical. On one hand, you have the cockpit, on the other, you have this cocoon. You can either decide to drive or to relax during your commute. It really does look like a Batmobile. Last but not least, Smart is celebrating its 20th anniversary by unveiling a pod car that is not an emotionless box. While the 4E's concept car's design may look simple, it's actually a glimpse into the future of urban mobility. It does without a roof, assuming cities will only be full of non-polluting vehicles. Google has just announced its partnership with Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance to push Android into more cars. What this means is that by 2021, Android will be directly built into the infotainment system of more than 10 million cars worldwide, offering Play Store apps, Google Apps navigation, and Google Assistant for voice command. Well, to talk more about this, let's welcome our guest, Philip Christ, an economist at the OECD here in Paris. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Now, Google struggled for over a decade to get into the car space, and one reason why is because the public uh, was afraid it would mine user data for profit. And one can understand why. I mean, Google is about to collect a tremendous amount of data. Who will be responsible for that data and for the privacy of the drivers? So let me give a bit of context, because you're right to point out that there's a lot of personally interesting data that might be available to Google and to Renault Nissan, depending on the nature of their agreement. The first thing is that there are 10.6 million Renault Nissan cars sold every year. There are 126 million Android devices out there in the wild collecting data as people allow it to because they get value from these Android devices. So what's happening in the car space is also part of what's happening largely in society with Android and iOS and other systems in terms of data collection. Who's going to control the data? Well, there are rules, at least in certain places, like in Europe, on how that data is used, what is permissioned, and what isn't. In the Alliance and Google agreement, it's the driver, the user of the vehicle, that gives access to certain data. So there has to be permission first. Secondly, in Europe, under the GDPR, under the, into the European Privacy Protection Act, those uses are strictly limited in what companies can and can't do. So at least in Europe, there is already a case for saying that that overreach may not happen, the overreach that you talked about. In other contexts, we don't know because those laws are just now being put into place or are just now being thought about. And now, this alliance, what does it mean? Does it mean that Google has won the battle to secure uh, the autonomous car industry? I mean, it is putting within 
you know, close reach all of its products to a lot of new, new users in a way. Yeah, I think, I think Renault Nissan is quite clear in firewalling um, what's going on in the algorithms and code that runs the automation aspects of their vehicle and the algorithms and code that deliver the infotainment part of the system. And that, that is what this agreement calls, uh, goes under. So I don't think it's clear that there are bridges directly between infotainment access that Android will operate now in Renault Nissan's cars and the code that actually operates and will operate the automated driving tasks. And there are real clear, clear reasons why that shouldn't happen because of the safety relevant aspects of the automation task. My feeling is that yes, Google has won a war, a battle if you will, to get into the car, but that doesn't mean that Google will control the car. Now self-driving cars imply that the people that were driving are now going to have more time on their hands to do other things. What are some of the things they'll be doing? Well, I think what they'll be doing a lot is spending time on their screens. I and mean, that's what we already see in public transport, where in Europe most people who get around in big cities are already captive of their screens. And that's a huge market for Google, iOS, and other uh, content providers. Uh, in the car space, I think uh, what we'll see is that there will be a large market in areas where there's a lot of driving, North America, for example, and a lot of that will be screen time. It'll be accessing services, it'll be shopping, it'll be entertainment, and that's why having Android as the infotainment hub in a car is going to be important for Google, um, as it will be for, uh, for Renault Nissan, because then they have a really big partner already in this space. Philip Chris, thank you so much for that. Some car makers believe that self-driving cars will be safer for people than cars driven by humans because they will get into fewer accidents. And while that claim is not yet proven, some scientists are trying to make it happen, and one way is to analyze the emotions of drivers. Here's a demo with our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. I'm currently in a concept car called Smart Cocoon, which has been developed by the French company Valeo. It is fitted with multiple sensors, including a sensor that remotely detects the well-being of the passengers and the driver. This has been developed by the Israeli startup Netira, and it essentially consists of a 40 nanometer chip that has been integrated in the seat. Uh, this chip is able to detect uh, vital signs like heartbeats, your respiration rate, the heartbeat variability, by just using by using a micro radar uh, of 140 gigahertz frequency. Now, by using uh, proprietary algorithms, the chip is able to detect and calculate all these vital signs. Now, the interesting part about this car is that the car adapts and reacts to these vital signs of the drivers, and it's able to adjust different parameters like air conditioning, uh, heating, and even uh, in certain cases, it's able to, able to release perfumes uh, and Perhaps the most uh, visual aspect of this detection and uh, reaction of the car is the humidifier. As you can see, if the air is too dry, it releases moist air and you can enjoy driving in a very relaxed and comfortable manner. Another facet of the car of the future is the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. Here's an example of it that has been developed by the French company Valeo. It looks like a magic trick, but I'm actually able to make the car in front of me partly disappear. Essentially, it helps the driver to see in front of the car that's in front of him. So here's an example of, of it. Julia, as you can see, is walking by in front of the car ahead of me. This is done uh, through a communication between the camera of this car and the car that's ahead of you. Uh, it's extremely important because it helps to improve road safety and it also aids in overtaking. How do you turn any surface into a touch surface? Well, the French startup Nanomade has the answer. And this answer is in the form of an ink that is touch, pressure sensitive and conductive. This ink is printed on a flexible surface like the polymer I'm holding in my hand. Now this polymer can be easily integrated or glued to any surface in a car, be it an armrest or a dashboard. Now the biggest advantage of this technology is that you can, for example, control a multimedia player without having to actually move from your place. Now this ensures two things. First is usability and second is safety. Over to you, Julia. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. You can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you next time.